Krishna, 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 hey. hey. Yes. Uh, everywhere you look, whatever you say, is Krishna, 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 hey. That way, Krishna will be listening to you, he will take note of you, and he will bless you accordingly. When the goal is a sign, namely the goal is to be Krishna conscious, then the path is slowly but progressively traversed and the ultimate goal is achieved. When a person knows the goal of life but is addicted to the fruits of activities, that means the pleasures, he is acting in karma yoga. Well, let me just explain this. What is karma yoga? Karma yoga, first of all, yoga means the union of the individual soul, sorry, with the supreme soul, Krishna, Paramatma. So karma yoga means, karma means action. Action that you perform to achieve or acquire a particular result, a fruit, we call it. So a karma yogi likes to attain a fruit and is very concerned about obtaining the fruit. For example, a person is running for a political election and he wants to achieve a position in the society or in the, uh, in the state, city council, state senate, federal government, he wants a position. So, therefore, when a person, uh, he wants to achieve some end, some goal, then we call this karma yoga, provided. Let me give another example. A person wants to make a million dollars this year, okay? And he strives and he struggles and he tries. And finally, at the end of the year, he makes a million dollars. So, it's, as far as we can see, it's just action, it's just karma. But what makes it yoga? Well, it becomes yoga when he takes the, a good percentage of the million dollars and dedicates it or devotes it to Krishna's loving service. Okay? Whereas an ordinary human being, he simply keeps it, puts it in the bank, reinvests it, or invest it so that he can make more money and he can exercise his greed. What is greed? I have so much today, I will make more tomorrow. Now tomorrow, I have gained more, I will make even more tomorrow. The next day, and the next day, this is greed. He already has more than he needs. And he's not concerned about how he uses it, except just to have it. He's always concerned that he may lose it. You know, sometimes you put your money in stocks and stocks go down, you put your money in bonds, the bond market crashes. So you don't have any money, so people are fearful. They're afraid. They're not depending on Krishna, they're depending on their own efforts, their own endeavors, their own enthusiasm, instead of depending upon the Supreme Lord who owns everything and decides on what you get, what you get, what you get, what you get, and what I get. He decides everything. Yes, he's right here in my heart, your heart, in the floor, in the lights, everywhere present. Krishna is all present, omnipresent. And he gives us each according to our merits. And what is a merit? Every time you do some pious activity, some righteous activity, some helpful activity, you make someone's life a little better, a little easier, a little sa more sanitary, beneficial. That's a useful activity and Krishna will credit you. When he sees you doing something nice and good and helpful to others, he will help you too. He doesn't forget. And then there are unmeritorious acts, harmful acts. You cheat somebody, you lie to somebody, you swindle somebody, you commit adultery with somebody's wife. These things are not accepted by Krishna as being beneficial. And he punishes us for these. 
So when the punishments come in the form of personal illness or mental aberration, mental disturbance, oh, so many mental disturbances you become excessively worried, or you may become an obsession, washing your hands a hundred times a day because you feel some guilt, and every time you wash, ah, I'm clean. And then five minutes later, I'm dirty again. I wash it. Yeah, these are obsessions. People have them. Compulsive obsession neurosis is called. Or people may have um, manic depression. They have a new name for it now. That was 50 years ago. That was the word that they had for it. Now they call it, uh, what do they call it? Anyway. Bipolar. 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 Yes. So, what happens? You go up, you go down, you go up, and you go down. Today you're happy, tomorrow you're miserable. When you're miserable, you have to take some drugs, or you take some alcohol, or you take something to get rid of this miserable feeling. So the point is this, is that uh, we want to do more and more things that are pleasing to Krishna, right? Otherwise, if you do things that are unpleasing to Krishna, things which he doesn't like and he punishes you. I gave you one example, mental problems, physical problems, you get indigestion, or you get pains in your neck, or you get pains in your chest, or you get pains in your ankles, your knees, you can't walk. And Krishna punishes us for our sins. Not so we can commit wrongs and not have to pay for them. We pay for them. And when we pay for them, we're sorry. Sometimes we forget, we don't even realize why we're experiencing such miseries? We like to think it's just luck. It just comes out of the blue. You're happy, I'm miserable, you're just lucky. Like you didn't do anything beneficial, or helpful, or meritorious. No, just luck. And being sarcastic. Not luck, it was action. And that action that you performed was pleasing to Krishna. So a karma yogi performs actions that are pleasing to Krishna. Whatever it may be, it could be a banker, it could be a, a, a salesman, a, a computer engineer. <clears throat> he can work in some of the major department stores like Macy's or, or any of these. The main thing he does, whatever he earns from it, he gives a percentage of it back to the Lord. That's what makes it yoga. He connects the result with the source of the result. And who is the source of the result? I didn't hear you. Krishna. I still didn't hear you. Krishna. No, I heard you. Yeah. Let's get it. Let's get with it. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Otherwise, you don't remember it. When you hear it firm and strong and loud and clear, you'll remember that Krishna is the one who gives you your paycheck. Krishna is the one who gave you your job. Krishna is the one who gave you your home. Krishna is the one who gave you your car. Krishna is the one who gave you your child. Krishna is doing everything. What are we doing? Just enjoying it. So therefore we owe Krishna something. What we owe him is whatever we can give to him in love and devotion. You can give a flower, Krishna says, whatever you offer me in love and devotion, a leaf, a flower, fruit, or water, I will accept it. Of course, if you're a multi-millionaire, you should be more than a link for the flower. And give a good percentage of your earnings back to Krishna so that they can be used, like in a temple like this, where they're trying to build a new temple. So we will need millions of dollars to do that. So if you, Krishna has given you millions and you don't know what to do with it, I just told you what to do with it. <laughs> you can give it towards this beautiful temple that's going to be built eventually here, not too far away. And everyone can come to it to be vast, big, large, and have such an expanse <clears throat> and have a lot of opportunities, recreation, marriage ceremonies there, so many things that everyone will be happy to uh, go to. And you, you'll be happy to bring some of your friends. When some of you are from India, you can bring them when they come here and show them this temple. Anyway, my main point is this, and I want to be very Sri Prabhupada has used the word karma yogi. Does everybody understand what karma yogi is now? Karma is what? Let me hear the word. Actions. I didn't hear anything from this side. Actions. I said, I, 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 you, have your ears closed? They said, 
Or karma is what? Action. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I might as well talk to myself, which I do quite a bit of when I'm in the room preparing for these lectures. Karma is action, and yoga is what? The union of what with what? Source of the result. The, the soul with the supreme soul, right? And where is that supreme soul located? In your body? In, what about here? In the ear? The nose? Heart. I want to hear it loud and strong. The soul is in where? Heart. And the super soul is where? Heart. And where in connection or in relation is the super soul with the soul? Heart. Where, how close are they? Next to each other. Next to each other. Did you all hear that? The soul. So it's here, they're not like this, they're like this, right next to one another. So the super soul knows everything that the soul is about. So uh, and if the, also, the soul has instruments, the mind, the intelligence, and the ego. And the uh, soul. Because the soul uses those as an instrument. Whenever we think something, the super soul hears it. So don't think that you can do something very, very improper and that the super soul won't know it. He knows it. And he won't let you get away with it. You may steal money from the state or the city or the federal government on your income tax. Fine. You'll get, you might get away with it. If you've got a good accountant. But the super soul, he sees it's outright terrible, should not be done, then he will have to pay. Let me give a better example. If you steal something from somebody knowingly, intentionally, the super soul knows it. And what's going to happen in the future? Hmm? What will happen as a result? You'll be punished. How will we be punished? Somebody raise the hand. Okay. You can be stolen too. Yeah. We will get something stolen from us. Thinking that I'm so powerful, I'm so, I'm, I'm so smart. I was able to steal this person's money. He didn't even know it. I put my hand in his pocket. I grabbed his wallet. He didn't even feel it. I'm a master of pickpocket. But one day, you have your wallet in there, and you forget it's sticking out in the back pocket, and somebody just bumps into you intentionally. <laughs> and he pulls it out, and he has your money. You can't escape evil. You give evil, you get evil. You give good, you receive good. Is that clear? Yeah. Therefore, we have every reason to do good, even just for our own sake. But that's not the real and higher purpose of doing good. We do that because it pleases Krishna. That's all. And what pleases Krishna gives us blessings. And when we get blessings from Krishna, the result is that we feel more peaceful, we feel more strong, we feel more connected to Krishna, we feel more steady in mind, we feel more in personal control of our thoughts, our feelings. And that's a nice way, it's a very secure way to feel. Many people are in anxiety. So many people can't sleep at night. Did everybody know that? There's you see that you all know that you see put on the television set and you see all those aids that they sell so that you can have a good restful sleep at night why because they're, they're all full of anxiety and uncertainty and doubt they're tossing and turning but persons who have no guilty conscience they lie down and in five seconds they're fast asleep how many are fast asleep in five seconds oh, wonderful wonderful any else that those are the twisters and turners in the back. <laughs> okay, we'll try to help you out. <clears throat> when the twisting and the turning is coming, just cry out to Krishna, help me. Krishna, help me. Chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Just keep chanting it. And at the end, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Lord, I need to get up for work tomorrow. Please help me get to sleep. Please, if I committed some wrong, some sin, some evil, 
I am very sorry for it. So please help me to get to sleep. It doesn't cost you any money to say that, to do that. The sleeping pills will cost you quite a bit. Okay? Uh, and the ones that are really heavy, they will cost you a lot. You have to get a prescription for that. Okay, let's move ahead. So we all know what karma yoga is now, right? Yes. I want to see some nods. Yeah. If you nod, I'm going to call on you. <laughs> if you don't know, go like this and I'll re-explain it. Because the kind of classes that I give is I make sure that everybody leaves with knowledge and not with, hmm, I wonder what he meant by that. Hmm, I wonder what he meant by that. Hmm. He said this, he said, and you walk out not knowing anything. I don't give those kind of classes. I give the kind of classes so that when you leave, you leave with the full understanding of what this book is about and you can apply it in your life and get the true wonderful benefits that I have gotten, so many of my God brothers have gotten, and which Srila Prabhupada wants all of you to get. Okay? That's the goal. So, how many understand now what karma yoga is? Show me by a nod of the head. Okay, how many don't know? I want to see how many. Everybody knows? Okay, let's hear it. Karma yoga. Karma, go ahead. Karma is action. Yoga is connecting the source of the action to the result of the action. Absolutely wonderful. And how does it manifest? How do you manifest karma yoga in your life? What do you do and what is the result of the doing? Let me hear more. Uh, if you don't know, it's okay. I, I didn't ask you that question before. Anybody know the answer to that one that I just gave? Because the man yes, go ahead. Well, action creates reaction. So if you do something in more goodness, you get goodness back. Do something more passion, passion back. Do something more vigorous, something back. That's yeah, right. that, that wasn't the answer that I was asking. What I was asking for when you are yeah, when you are a karma yogi, what does a karma yogi do? What is his prime act? And we know that he acts, but what does he do with the result of the action? Go ahead. He gives it to Krishna. He gives it to Krishna. That's what makes it yoga. Yoga means uniting the soul with the super soul, and that's where the union comes in. In a higher state of consciousness, he does not even care about the result. He just does the very best that he can. And what you said was all right, but it wasn't the answer that I was looking for. Yeah. So, so, so what he does, what he does is uh, he gives the result to Krishna. But in bhakti yoga, a bhakti yogi is different. He simply serves out of love for Krishna. If Krishna gives him a million dollars, even though he's working towards getting a million, he doesn't care. He just takes it and does what the karma yogi does, gives it to Krishna. And if Krishna gives him five million instead of one, he still doesn't care. You know why? Because it's never going to be his in his mind. It belongs to Krishna. Like a bank teller. We all go to the bank, put your money there. That's money what many of us are doing in our mind now. But we know that the bank teller, the teller is the, like the, uh, the uh, clerk, takes your money, takes thousands and thousands of dollars during the course of the day. But can he take the money at the end of the day, put it in his pocket, leave? Can he do that? Why not? Because it's not his, it belongs to the bank. Similarly, all our money belongs to Krishna. And the Bhakti Yogi, although he may be striving for a million dollars because maybe Krishna says, okay, I want you to try, you have a lot of talent, you have a good voice, go out and sing. People will pay you millions of dollars to hear you singing. So go ahead and do it, and then give it back to me. So he goes and he does it, and sometimes he doesn't get any money. But he doesn't care. He's doing the service, and he's doing it lovingly. He's doing it with his mind fixed on Krishna, and he's doing it the best that he can. Is that clear that when we do perform bhakti yoga, and I've told you all what karma yoga is, he wants a fruit, and then he gives it away. The bhakti yoga strives for fruit, but he does not care whether it comes